This is another model railroad layout. You're seeing the railroad crossing sign there. And this is all for someone's house. Yes, another model railroad video for those of you who like those. And uh, here we go for the railroad crossing. And as we drive up this beautiful western Chicago home, You'll, uh, you'll get the chance to uh, see what we're doing here today. So, with that being said, let's jump right out and get right to it. First of all, as we go into the garage, we see that that's the actual yard. And to give you an idea, we're going to be looking at G-Gauge today. I'll put my hand next to it so you can kind of get an idea of how big some of these engines are and that's just absolutely gorgeous but take a look how he set this up where the trains come in the yard come into the garage and this is the yard that they go out and you can see the power units all there and um he likes some union pacific obviously and we've got a wonderful santa fe train so you're getting the flavor for what we're going to be looking at. Okay. We can, we can hear some of the units and the sounds as they, they fire up. So let's, let's come on out here. And as we come on out, and here's the man himself, Dennis. Nice to see you. How are you? Welcome to the Blue Stone Ridge Railroad. Yes, indeed. And Dennis, before we, we actually see it, just give me an idea. We started in 2006, and this is your backyard. How much, you were telling me, how much stone had to come in to the yard to get this railroad to look like what we're going to see? We estimated the overall materials that have been placed on the property at about 150 tons, <laughs> and now one ounce left the property. Everything was recycled or reused wow. uh, in order to make backfill for some of the areas. Uh, a lot of the plantings were kept and uh, replanted yes. after the project was finished. And, and you, ha you have people who come and par uh, part of gardens and things that come by and they get the chance to look at your layout. I belong to three clubs, uh, Midwest Pond and Koi Society, the LGB Club of Chicago, and the Cagers, which is the Chicago Land Garden Railway Society. So when we have our open houses and or just uh, kind of on a Saturday or Sunday, People come out and they're able to run parts of the railroad themselves. Wow, so let's jump right into your railroad, stand next to me and we'll take a look. Let's go to the right first as we, we wanna just get an overall perspective. Uh, here's the house and here's the layout. I'll give you one quick sweep and then we'll actually kinda go further and take a deeper look. As you can see, what we're talking about, this layout is just amazing and it's all done so so let me come back up and we'll take take our time first of all it greets you of course as Dennis did with a lovely welcome so so as we move forward Dennis uh, you know talk to me how many trains do you, can you run on this layout at one time uh, optimum with engineers running them we can run 11 to 13 trains simultaneously uh, we literally have four running this morning as I'm here by myself and obviously for safety's sake. All of the trains are actually operated. There's no uh, set stop or, uh, you know, preventive um, from uh, having an accident. So you have to keep an eye on what you're doing. And you have an actual waterfall running through to a koi pond. So you have live fish and this is spectacular. How did you come up with the, the design? First of all, I mean, what inspired you? What made you say, you know what, I think the backyard of my house is going to turn into a well, wonderful showcase of trains. Well, the joke of it was uh, I planned on uh, two loops. Uh, I really never had a train as a child, and we were getting to the point of landscaping the backyard, and I was uh, uneducated enough to think that I could have the railroad go up and down the hill. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I, I subsequently learned about grades and railroading and 
uh, it led to this type of layout. Now, this city section here that I'm looking at, what was the, uh, you know, how did, how did you decide where the city and where I'm, I'm looking at another house back here, how the country, and you laid this all out beautifully. And not only that, but you've got great cars here too. If people are car enthusiasts, I mean, there's, there's fun, fun cars here. We've got an accident over here. And uh, I mean, there's details at every turn. How long did it take you to set up? You know, the idea starts in 2006. How did the idea come to, to, to this point? Uh, this, the track was all laid as you see it, basically. Uh, the maturity of the train garden came with the adding of the features, the buildings, the figurines, uh, and the little uh, venues. Uh, we have the cruise night, we have the cloud of horses notch, and we basically have an industrial area where uh, we have some collector cars that uh, are from a die-cast collection of U.S. Postal and of Illinois Bell Telephone, basically. Uh, these are cars that date back to the late 40s, early 50s. And then the Corvette Cruise Night is basically an array of all the various car, Corvette cars on display. That is great. Now, you call this this area up here, what'd you call it, the dog bone? This is the dog bone. It basically it has a little bit and kind of like a kidney bean, but I call okay. it the dog bone. The dog bone, okay. And then we have the two main lines which go all the way around the layout. And then at the far end, I have an area that's called the spaghetti bowl, <laughs> as that allows for alternative track arrangements and the trains alternate tracks that they're running on. Okay, well, let's take take each section at a time. There's no rush. Here's another waterfall coming down into the Koi Pond. And we'll feature that in a moment as we get down there. These are the antique cars you were telling me about. Yes. Now, share with me, what, there's some history to these. What, what kind of cars are these? Uh, they are die cast. Actually, the gentleman who designed and created these was an accounting client of mine when I was working. Yeah. And every year he would create a die cast model, one for the employees of the U.S. Postal Service and one for Illinois Bell Telephone, basically. So uh, the postal cars are pretty much the same, but there's a, a, an array of, of cars on the Illinois Bell. You have the line cars, you have the regular service trucks, yeah. you have the pole trucks. And these are them. And they're what? And these are them. These and are those cars. All right, let's keep walking around. Okay, now this is one of your main lines here. And by the way, there's our fish. I guess if they were scale fish, they'd be like orcas. So uh, these... They would be whales, basically, yeah. if they were in scale. <laughs> we, we, we uh, got our... They have got well, one of them's maybe the size of a years. big dolphin, but uh, yeah. Okay, so we got our fish here. But well, we have some smaller ones yeah, in the sure, pond. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, we've got Horses Head Notch Grain Company, and we're gonna walk along the side. I do wanna, I do wanna give people one perspective as we look here. Let's take a look at this engine. That's really if you get a shot of this reflecting in the pond, it's a gorgeous shot. I'm at the far end when okay. you get a chance. Yeah. I just built this building. This one's a new one. Yeah. Tell me about this one. Uh, this actually came out of the Colorado Model Company, and it's a very basic, you get the raw building. Yeah. And all of the decoration, the painting, the putting it together uh, is basically custom by the individual doing it. So this was the paint scheme that I came up with for this particular building, and uh, I'm really happy with it, frankly. Yeah, looks great. Well, I'm glad we can feature it. And here comes a train coming out of the tunnel, I see. And we've got the water coming down there. So we'll feature that as it kind of comes. These are the right Queen out. Mary diesels that were basically popular in the early 50s, were workhorses for the Santa Fe Railroad. And they basically pull our advertising train. So you see all of the very popular products on the sides of the box cars, and then it's followed up with a Santa Fe caboose. Nice.
And I want to stand right there, Dennis. Stay right where you're at. I want to give people the ultimate perspective of what we're looking at here. There's Dennis. <laughs> and there's his layout. Wow. Okay, so let's keep kind of rolling forward here. All right, so we've got the koi pond. I see him uh, occasionally coming up to snort, which is great. And then we've got this uh, Colorado Southern train here. So we're going to feature that. And the detail is spectacular in some of these trains. And again, I'll kind of scroll back to just give you some perspective of the waterfalls that are coming down. And you can see the, the wonderful bridge. We've got somebody getting married in this section. Which is great. And the gunsmith. And we have actual real trees that are in here. Everything in the garden is, is actually real. There's nothing fake in the way of the floor. Look at that. It looks like so actually it's, uh, pine a trees. fair amount of work to maintain it. It has to be pruned to keep it to size. Sure. Okay. And then we've got the, the viper next to the to the house here. That's great. And this garden is spectacular. I'm gonna actually walk up the center piece and give some people some perspective more on the waterfall and the trains. And you can see that these trains come right through this walkway area. So obviously we'll be careful. The overall layout is 100 by 30. So it's 3,000 square feet. We have 1,800 plus feet of track. And all of the track on the outside is nickel silver. Uh, it's less corrosive than most other tracks. Uh, the garage has about 450 feet of storage. All of the trains are able to come out that door there. And there's a door at the other end of the garage in which they come in. Uh, there's almost 50 turnouts on this entire layout. And it is totally integrated. I can put a train anywhere on the layout, whichever direction you say. One of the highlights of making that possible was this serpentine, uh, which takes it from the higher level, winds down around, and comes out here in the valley, basically, for the mainland. Main line. Uh, that literally allows for a two-foot drop in grading within an eight-foot area. Wow. All right, let, let's walk, uh, let's, let me walk, uh, show me where I can walk up here. I mean, we've got, there's so right many things you get. Step prospectors and his prospecting here's the step yeah, you can step here okay and then you can step on the track <laughs> that's a place to step okay. and you go down to that I got you can you. step on the track but you have to watch for a train coming no problem and uh, as long as you walk flat on the track so you don't do this gotcha all right okay you I will can walk all the way around the garage also basically all right so I'll plan on I'll plan on watching my steps yeah but I think I can step toward the edge of the, the uh, got it those blocks because they're not glued down. Got you it. You can walk to the inside, but that's All right. Good. Let me even just get this section here so people can take in just this section. As I keep walking back. If you can turn it off a second, I can turn down one screen on. It's hung up. Well, Dennis, let me let you work on that train. I have more than enough to video. And we've got this wonderful bridge here and the elevation. As you can see, there's trains running all the way in the background. And here we've got this wonderful train coming right across the bridge. Like so. In a very loose uh, kind of a plan, uh, this represents crossing the United States. Okay. The East Coast is over there where you have the notches as you would in New Hampshire and Vermont. Uh, here is more of the mountains and the greenery of Colorado and Montana. Okay. 
So again, uh, we're working with the area or era of the late 40s, early 50s, where you had uh, steam on the demise, and you had uh, diesels rising to the uh, status that they are today. What a beautiful train. And with all of the rock, I mean, uh, setting this all up, I mean, what were some of the frustrations trying to put this together? Because this, of course, runs almost seamlessly, and to have that happen is is an amazing effort. So how did- It, it takes constant maintenance to make it run in uh, this condition, and the ballasting is about the most important. You have to have the track beds basically uh, level so that the trains stay level. Okay. And with the uh, freezing in the winter time and the snow and then the de uh, defrosting, uh, it is a constant project to uh, basically make sure that the track is in good shape. In mid-April, I come out and I basically uh, uh, preen and round up all of the track beds to keep the weeds down and then the process of doing the pruning of the uh, live greenery uh, begins to take place. Because this year with all the rain we've had, uh, we've had a tremendous amount of growth requiring a lot of pruning. Just spectacular. And here's the garage where they go back in. And the greenhouse. Another bridge. We have the Santa Fe coming around this way. Absolutely spectacular. And Dennis, how I want to end is, uh, when you originally got started, come on with me, when you originally got started with this idea, you you, you mentioned that, uh, there's your railroad crossing, six tracks, that's awesome. You mentioned that uh, uh, you needed some assistance, and uh, tell us a little bit about Bill. Uh, Bill Blockner was the, basically I refer to him as the genius behind this layout. Uh, he owned a nursery, he raised koi, uh, had a great eye for rock as you can see the layout and the placement of it uh, he literally did this entire layout in five and a half months the the rest of it's the maturity of the plants and the addition of uh, the buildings and things but by and large uh, this was Bill's design and I asked him uh, if he had a plan and his plan was <laughs> whatever the land will let us do and as the grades have dictated um, they did force us to do some things that we didn't dream of, frankly. So uh, this is uh, Mr. Faulkner passed away on ja January 31st of 2010. Uh, this was the one project that he had done the whole thing. He did the waterfalls, he did the ponds, he brought the koi in. Uh, basically, a lot of the plantings were from his nursery. Uh, and as I said, his eye for rock and the placement of it uh, was just spectacular. So this is kind of in a memorial garden. He was into hostas, he loved hostas. So we basically have done a couple other plants, but it's some nice varieties of hostas that are, you know, surrounding the memorial. Well, well, Dennis, first of all, I'd like to give a quick shout out to Mike Mandarino, a friend of mine who introduced us to each other. And thank you for this wonderful opportunity to share your layout with really the world. So thanks so much, Dennis, for showing us your train set. Thank you for coming out.